maybe it's hard to see at this immediate moment, but I would like to think that in 2022 is the year where we are going to say to ourselves that we're still here, we survived, and now it's time for us to take a step to thrive. That was District 1 Supervisor Connie Chan. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. In this podcast, Connie picks up where she left off in part one. She goes into more detail about her time at UC Davis and her return to the city. With degrees in religious studies and classical Chinese, she wasn't quite sure what to do with herself. But she found some volunteer work in translation. Connie shares a story from that time that ended up being pivotal for her and her life in public service. She also shares the story about how she wound up running for and winning a seat on the Board of Supervisors. And we end the podcast with Connie's thoughts on what it means to still be here. Here's Connie. Because Davis was a choice by me, I, I'm, I had a good fortune to, to got into Berkeley and Davis and for all Asian parents would know, why would you choose Berkeley, uh, Davis over Berkeley? Because mm-hmm. everybody's like, Berkeley is Berkeley, Berkeley, Berkeley. the school, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, because one, Davis was offering me a really good financial aid package mm-hmm. and scholarship. Mm-hmm. Um, Berkeley didn't quite, so money is, is, is a concern a for my family, mm-hmm. you know? But second, also, I'm, my mom was like, oh, you get to stay at home and take mm-hmm. BART. To school mm-hmm. and I'm like Mm-mm. nope I don't want that I yeah. don't want that yet yeah, I, I was like but I, I want to see you on the weekends and yeah. whenever I, I I need to but I just want to be far enough that I get to like try out a dorm life mm-hmm. so Davis was the choice yeah the other Davis UC Davis question uh, for everyone who moves there whether they go to school or not did you ride your bicycle everywhere? <laughs> oh my goodness! I know. Uh, I I it's didn't. Flat. You it is to. flat. Uh, I did not. As you know, I grew up in Chinatown, right? Yeah. Or, or before that, I was like in Chinatown. Didn't have a bike. You, I walk everywhere and bus and right. and hills. So, my first time riding bike was at Davis. Oh, ever? Ever? In your life? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, it's probably a good place for that to Great happen. Great place, supposedly. Yeah, right. But I, what most people didn't know about me also by then, um, I was actually already uh, legally blind. Okay. Like I do not have any hand-eye coordination. Okay. <laughs> I wear contact lens. Yeah. But I'm like negative seven, ne- negative 7.25. Okay. That's, That's really a lot. Bad. That's a high number. Yes. Okay. So I really am like, you know, technically DMV is like uh, you, you have to wear like there's things that you have to wear corrective lens, right. lenses. Right, right. Um, with that, no hand-eye coordination. I literally, uh, all of us decided to, uh, from the dorm, decided to ride our bikes to down, downtown, Davis downtown, but it's really a theater. Uh, <laughs> that's all you got there, D- theater and a cafe and, yeah. that, and a bookstore. So we decided to, to ride to downtown and I was like, sure, I'll hop on a bike. It's how hard could it be? Mm-hmm. Come on, like you can do this or I can do this. But I totally crashed it. Oh no. I don't know if anybody knows about Davis, but it's like when you're on campus, there's like yellow poles that stop cars from going in, yeah. but you can bike through. Right. And everybody would just like zoom, zoom through. And of course, for whatever reason, I don't know why I did that. I just really like just right toward the yellow pole. <laughs> I completely trashed my roommate's bike and oh she's like, okay, I think maybe you should just walk now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. We'll wait for you. Kind yeah, of. <laughs> they basically, they're like, yeah. we'll see you in the cafeteria. Okay, yeah. we, I'll grab you a banana. I'm like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so ever since then, walking was just fine. Yeah, yeah, no need <laughs> for bicycle. <laughs> oh God. And then, so what did you study at, at Davis? I study so the so the uh, official uh, title of the study is religious studies. Okay. And in Chi- classical Chinese, okay. that's my double major. And the religious studies, when I when I took that on, my mom was very concerned. She's like, "You're not gonna be a nun, are you? Mm-hmm. Like, please tell okay. me now." <laughs> and I was like, "No, mom, I'm not gonna be a nun. It's gonna be fine." By the way, my family is like Chinese Baptist. Okay. Uh, so, pretty religious. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, 
And I was like, Mom, I'm not going to be a nun or like missionary or anything like that. I'm just really curious. And in reality, when it comes to religious studies at Davis, you, you don't just study one religion. You, right. you really study a lot of different religions. Right. You know, right. the American Indians. You know, and and some of the um, uh, all sorts. Uh, at some point, you also learn the definition of a cult. Mm. And and mm -hmm. just I I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um, and believe it or not, in some strange kind of way, I really believe my curiosity about just people's mind, yeah. what they believe in, right. what make them believe something, mm -hmm. and what make them sacrifice so much for something that they believe in, fundamentally the core value of who you are and what motivates people to do what they do. Right. Um, I think that helps my job today. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Did you have a plan? Or was it just like, I'm, this is just what I'm interested in? Do you know what I mean? Like some people go into college and like, I'm going to study this totally. because I want to do this. Yeah. Some people are just like, no, I'm just interested in this and I want to kind of m like mas master it. I, yeah, totally. I'm opposite of my brother who is just like, I am going to be a computer engineer uh -huh. and this is what I do. And here's the course, <laughs> courses I'm going to take from the first year all the way through so that I will graduate at this time. Like he's mm -hmm. a planner. Mm -hmm. um, I, on the other hand, it's like, oh, let's like open this catalog this semester, and what are the classes available? Please don't don't let it be eight o'clock in the morning, and <laughs> 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 you know, and, and and what can what sound interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, like, oh, Bible as a literature class, sure, why not? Like, that's interesting that enough. That does sound interesting. Yeah. Yes, and so I end up really where I landed was just. Uh, interest driven. Okay, got it, got it. Wasn't planning be on being a nun. Definitely not a nun. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so when you got back after you graduated, um, in addition to now being over 21 and being able to go to bars and going to different neighborhoods, what were you doing when you came back? Now you have a, you have two degrees, right? Yeah. Yeah. So w I was roaming around trying to figure out my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure a lot of people. Actually, I would say even probably sometimes I still do that now uh, <laughs> at 43. I think that's a good quality, to be right? honest. Right? Mm -hmm. Wondering uh, and being curious, totally. Uh, so I, that's what I was doing. And then I, I, my mom was like, what is it that you want to do? And I said, I just want a gig where I can uh, be motivated to wake up. Mm -hmm. Like A reason. Yeah, a reason. Mm -hmm. I love sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm also a night owl. So I'm like, if there's something that actually makes me want to just jump out of bed and wake up, like, I think that's it. And do that thing. And wake up that, and do that yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all I want. And my mom was like, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it took me a while to really think it through. And what actually also is what can I do? Mm -hmm. What mm. are my skill sets? Mm -hmm. And it, as it turns out, I was like, oh, I'm actually really good at this language thing. Right. Meaning I can interpret, I can translate, I, I write a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I write in Chinese a lot, I write in English a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, naturally, I can start doing translation. Okay. That's really what I started doing out. And you spoke three languages, right? Mandarin, Cantonese, Cantonese and, and, English. And, and English. And you could write in all three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, I can do translation. I, that, that's a good gig. Mm -hmm. and, and I did. Okay. And then also happens to do volunteer work mm -hmm. and uh, because I was like oh I, it will help me with translation mm -hmm. so I find a San Francisco Bar Association looking for volunteer to do interpretation work okay and one of the first gig that I did was as a volunteer and also just practicing my skills was to interpret for pro bono tenants attorney okay very interesting and I think Right, but I have no clue. Right, right? Yeah. I would just like I would just want something meaningful mm -hmm. and at a table, interpreting for tenants, immigrants, you know, monolingual, and with an attorney who's obviously passionate about tenants. Mm -hmm. I don't remember anybody's name. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I'm just there because I'm just showing up and bright eye and just like okay, I'm just doing a service. Yeah, right. Doing Connect, what I connecting. Do. Yeah. The, one side with the other. And mm -hmm. then there's the arbitrator and there's the landlord. And mm -hmm. it, it was intense because they, he, this landlord wants to evict this tenant um, because they the, t the landlord saying this tenant is illegally subleasing uh, the space mm -hmm. to someone else. Mm -hmm. And um, 
the tenants insist that this is my family. Mm -hmm. I'm living. I'm having my family live with me, mm -hmm. and the landlord insists that this person is not related to to the tenant. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of back and forth. Right. And I during the interpretation, I start to realize one thing is that there's a cultural uh, challenge here. Mm -hmm. The tenant truly firmly, he's not lying, mm -hmm. he truly firmly believed that this person is his brother mm -hmm. because they share the same last name. Mm -hmm. uh, this person uh, came from the same village. Mm -hmm. They're not blood related. Right. They do not share parents or cousins. Or, they're not even cousins. They're just people who share the same last name. Mm -hmm. So it's not fraudulent. Right. But to his mind, in, in Chinese culture, if you're coming, if you and I share the same last name and you actually come from the same village that I am, you are my family and right. you are my brother, you're my sister. And I will take care of and you. And I will take care of you. And mm -hmm. that has been what Chinatown has been about. Right. And so I said to the tenant's attorney, I was like, may I just not interpret for a minute and just may I just kind of explain what mm. I think we are stuck on and the tenant's attorney was like okay like explain to me I was mm. like hey I explained to the to him the way I just talked about it's like I think this is a cultural misunderstanding mm -hmm. and the tenant's attorney say oh my goodness yes so you know can we just communicate this and I I help resolve that case awesome not, and obviously the tenant's attorney really is the one who did all the real work. Sure. But I felt like they were, because of my interpretation, not just the words, but the fact that I understand the culture, mm -hmm. changed the dynamic at that table. It gives it context, it gives it meaning. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And it's like eating spicy food mm -hmm. once you eat it. And it's like kind of like, cause a lot of work mm -hmm. to put into interpreting and it's, it's a lot of emotional work. Mm -hmm. So it's like, for me, I love spicy food. So Same. it's like, right? So it's like you eat the spicy food, it's like, oof. But then once you eat it, it's like, whoa, you get kind of addicted to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the release. Yes. It's a release. And then once you walk out that room, you're like, oh my goodness, like I helped. And yeah. I think that was a it. Accomplishment, right? Yeah. 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 Would you say that was that moment was a, a calling or a pivotal moment? Yes. Or? Yeah. I think that was it for okay. me. And it was a game changer for me that I'm willing to wake up. Um, any moment. First of all, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Step one. Just wake up and um, and get to work. Okay. And it's the reason why I remember that story or moment. Yeah. And I and I tell it uh, whenever someone asks me, especially I think the young people today, mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, what gets you into public service?" I think that's that was the moment. Mm -hmm. it's like, or the not so young people. <laughs> or the I'm not pointing so young. to myself. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, but that is your story. That's and that's that's um, it's compelling because I I feel like it it not only was pivotal but it like informs probably a lot of what of what you do. Yeah. And have done over the years. Yeah, and right? and that was also the moment you I look back to think about San Francisco as a place. Mm -hmm. Um, to think about we have pro bono tenants attorney, mm -hmm. to think about that we have tenants protection law, to think about like so much people that have, so many people have put out, put into so much work yeah. for that moment to happen, mm -hmm. to make sure that you, someone do, do also have the rights to interpretation. Mm -hmm. And all that, that was the laws that put in place for that conversation to take place. Right. Um, and obviously it took me a long time though, you know, along sure. the way to realize that moment and, and the people that you saw in the room and the people that I didn't see in the room mm. to make that situation happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say uh, ever since then, I think that I'm always striking to uh, the effort, put in the effort to think about that moment and that situation. And, yeah. and if I can solve and help someone not to be displaced, even just one person, I think, that's that's worth it. Well, it's a, it's a form of avocation, mm -hmm. right? And, yes. And it's like especially that situation, um, advocating and and helping the vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. I do want to hear where did you get the idea? And also, if before we get to that, if there's anything in in, in between oh. that moment and when you first decided to run for office. Oh my goodness, um, I never thought about running for office. I mean, I, I have helped a lot of people run for office um, mm -hmm. because I believe in them. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, 
that they really are the leaders that we need at that moment. Um, Can you give me some examples? Yeah, that totally. That folks might relate to people. Uh, you know, I, uh, Kamala Harris running for her re-election for district attorney. Mm -hmm. um, was that, what year was that? Oh, like, oh seven goodness, or so? 2007, yeah. Seven, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, good memory. And then also there's like Aaron Peskin, mm -hmm. you know, for his non- When he came back. Yeah, the yes. non-consecutive uh, third term. Yes. And the second coming. <laughs> he was my first supervisor when I moved here in 2000. Oh. And I remember he got reelected and then termed out. And when he came back, I didn't know the rules yet. I was yeah. like, wait, what? Huh? How did this happen? <laughs> that guy. I was like, yeah, we miss him. Yeah. Do we? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we do. I, I, I did. Yeah. That's the reason why I wanted to help him to come back. Because yeah. I was like, oh, we need we need some experience. And he's the supervisor in Chinatown, right? Yes, so, absolutely. Okay. Um, and like that's how I met him too. I was actually I don't know if he he remembered it. I remembered it. It was North Beach Place opening, and I was like community organizing uh, for for with actually with, with the people there, with tenants and and folks, and with police department too. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the North Beach Place, and and he came and do the did the ribbon cutting. Okay. Um, I I never thought about running for office. Help a lot of people. Um, you mean volunteering, like uh, yeah. uh, cam campaign working? Totally, kind of okay, like okay. helping campaign or mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, as, a, as a staff watching other folks like running and just making sure that whatever the, the, the day job is, is continuing while they take their time to also um, campaigning. Okay. So those are those are the some of the folks, and of course there's also ballot measures. It's mm -hmm. like so much fun mm -hmm. uh, to to help with those two. Um, along the way, though, I, I just never really thought about running because I think you can do so many things mm -hmm. to help your community, um, even if you're not running for office. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just do my thing, like live my life and like do what I think at the moment as a job that I think it's meaningful. I don't really plan my career. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of do it. Right. And when and a door open, I also just take it too. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I, I seek out doors, definitely. I think everybody's do, but everybody does it. But I, when a door opens to me, I always check it out. Check it right before figuring out whether to go in or not. Yeah. yeah. What about personal life? Mm. So I have a partner that I know since I was 16 years old. Oh, wow. But we didn't get together until I was like 26. You had to go off to Davis and yes, crash I, a bike and yes. learn how to drink and all that. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then now we have an eight year old. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yes. And uh, and he uh, actually, he the, the, one of the reasons we met or how we met was uh, he was a bartender also at North Star. Uh, oh, yeah. I love and, North Star. Yeah. And I live right next to it. Okay. <laughs> That's the apartment that my mom and I, you like, and my brother, like that we grew up in, and my family was at. Awesome. And so that's how I met Ed, uh, who's also now a, a San Francisco firefighter. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, that's that's my personal life, and, and and I think that for Ed, he wasn't born here; he was born in New York, and then he came to San Francisco when he was six months old. Oh, so wow. it's his one of his life regrets, I guess, is never going to be able to be a native. Oh, almost. So almost. close. So close. Six so months close. short. He, is that why he's a firefighter? He's paying it back? Uh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and and he just loves it here. And yeah. I think with my mom, before she passed last year, that her community and her life was just in San Francisco. Ed, mm -hmm. too. And I'm like, I'm tied to these two people. So I'm here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so I am here. And then, you know, once I gave birth to my son, he... Now, finally, we have a real He's born and raised. native San Francisco uh, in the family. So, so here I am. So what happened that you decided to run? Oh, my God. Like, I, I don't know if I decided to run or <laughs> someone else decided for me. Uh, or is it like a collective decision together, which I, I think really that's it. It's a collective decision. That the I, universe or like more specifically? I think universe and people. And people specific people. Around okay. us okay. Uh, or me. Okay. Um, that, you know, I, I think that supervisor, um, the Dan District One supervisor at Supervisor Sandra Lee Fior 
Is she decided not to seek re-election? That was a surprise. Yeah. I, I happened to live in the district, and I remember everyone was like, wait, what? We love you. I know, because yeah. she was doing such a great job, and yeah. so so did I. It's so funny. Okay, so Sandy called me up. She's like, oh, let's have coffee. And I was like, is Sandy going to run for mayor? Ooh. That was my thought. Is that why that Sandy wants my my like you know endorsement? Like, yeah, or not, yeah, or just or help, help, right? Like right. like hey, would you like to help? Because a lot of times that's the phone calls I get. Would you like to help on the campaign? You know, mm-hmm. and do this and that, or help like translate materials, mm-hmm. and you know, and so I that's a lot of stuff that I did. So I thought Sandy was gonna run for mayor, mm-hmm. and so we sat down, and and Sandy is. If for anybody who have ever met Sandy, know that she's very straightforward. Mm-hmm. She's just like, go right there. Mm-hmm. She's like, hey, Connie, I don't think I'm running for re-election. Would you like to run from my seat? And I was like, what? what? What's happening? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why aren't you? like? Were I, you looking for cameras? Like, this is a joke. I was like, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, is there someone going to jump out? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was shocked. And instead, I think that the first, at least, like, some good part of it, it's like, why aren't you running right. again? Right. Like, that was more, like, my reaction. Did you have that conversation with her? Yeah. We don't have to go into it. Yeah. But. And also, also, like, I thought you were running for mayor. Right. Right. <laughs> and so she's like, no. Like, you know, I, I think that she, she, and I don't totally understand, too. Like, at some point, work-life balance is mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. And in this job, in the job of public service, and in San Francisco's politics. I think at times that uh, life and work blur mm. the line. Mm-hmm. Sometimes not in an entirely good way, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have to keep it real uh, to say that. And, and then sometimes it's great mm-hmm. when it's like you're thriving, your community is thriving and you're together, it's your neighborhood and it's your hood. You're so excited because that's where you live and you're proud of the work. And then there are moments that it brings you down too, right? Sure. Uh, it could be heartbreaking and it could be uh, tense and it could be full of so much conflict. Mm-hmm. And, and also takes so much time away uh, from your family because mm-hmm. you're now like really spending your time with the people right and that's what the job requires you to do that well and then there's also the job of campaigning the job which of campaigning. I know for firsthand oh. is no joke yeah um, time stress energy all that's a time away from family yeah um, and, and, and everybody still think that if you give them 15 minutes of your time it's never still gonna be enough right but but to Accumulatively thinking about all these people want 15 minutes of your time. There's not enough time. Then there's no, that's inhuman. Yeah. <laughs> and then human. I would think that there are times you want to spend more than 15 minutes with your family. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit more. Well, and also like all that that you're putting into a campaign and you don't know if you're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. And yours, if I may, was a hard, pretty hard fought battle there was, toward the end. It was pretty close. It was hard. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what contributed to Sandy not wanting to seek re-election. Right. Is because she felt Didn't that she's go that. yeah she already have served a good chunk of her life and years mm-hmm. as a member of the board education, mm-hmm. and then she spent some time as in her first term as a board supervisor. She looked back. She felt like I pay my dues. I here's my public service career. I'm really happy, and she was moving on to spend time with her family. Mm-hmm. Her husband was retired, mm-hmm. you know, or retiring at that moment. So I think that makes sense. And so here we are, and I'm kind of like, there was a moment where, and this is truly how I think at times, and I'm very fortunate to have a partner who allows me the space, uh, a safe space, and who will be a catch-all person to willing to allow me to say, can I just go big and go home for once? Mm, (laughs) I've always been playing it very safe. Right. Because I kind of go with the flow with my career. Mm -hmm. I think that there, I never try something that I will be putting out and try really hard. Mm -hmm. And and to know that it's actually uphill battle. I knew it was an uphill battle. I didn't think that it was going to be easy. I never thought it was going to be easy. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a lot of people, actually. I talked to a lot of people from the community. I talked to my friends. I work friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked to people like Supervisor Aaron Peskin, Mm -hmm. you know, who've been in this for so long. It's like, can we do this? Mm -hmm. And and I say to all these people that I talk with, it's like, I know I cannot do this alone. Mm -hmm. Will you stay with me? Like, I need your help. Mm -hmm. And I think that literally was everybody that I talk with. 
And so when I say it's a collective decision, I actually really mean it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I need to get to many, many, many yes. <laughs> and and those yeses for me, it has to come from my friends and family first. Right. If they hesitate, if they have questions and doubts, I know that in the moment of like low of the lows, and I need them, they may not be the, be able to hold me up emotionally, right. and that. Would just be bad. Yeah. So I, I really need them to believe in it just as much as I do, if not more. Right. And I'm very fortunate that I have a community that believe in me awesome. <laughs> sometimes more than I believe in myself. Yeah. And I think I'm a very、uh, lucky to have that. Awesome. Quickly, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Now what? <laughs> Oh my God! I guess it's only it's only been a year that you've been in office, right? R- roughly, a little little more than a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We took office in twenty twenty one, and it's only been a year.、Mm-hmm. Felt like forever because of pandemic,、mm-hmm. um, and、uh, because just so much work that we had to do and we were doing, and and in some way it was done. I wouldn't say in isolation,、mm-hmm. but I would say that it was done in a way that is not as visible. Right. Right. Deliver grocery for families and people, and not got, and and those cannot be seen. Right. You know,、right. Uh, or making calls and making sure that we have budget we,、uh, to you know fund those programs.、Uh, a lot of things that it's day in and day out hard work,、um, but they don't always、uh, people don't always hear about it. Right. And they don't need to. They、right. shouldn't need to. Right. That's why you're here. Yes. <laughs> like I gotta do my job and keep my head down and focus.、Um, so here we are, and and we're gonna continue. And、um, I I I think that stay the course、mm-hmm. uh, is sort of my my thought at the moment. Okay.、Uh, I think people we elected us. Um, in, because they believe in us to help them problem solve,、mm-hmm. and、uh, to to believe in our values, and I think that my values have always been really for immigrants and working families, and it's I know that my job is to bring a voice to the table when people are too busy,、mm. too scared, and too worried about their lives to be able to be here in city hall to you know. Say this is and make demands. And this is what I need. This is what they deserve, right? So I I know that's that's my job、mm-hmm. to show up for them. Yeah,、um, I can't. I, there's one more thing I want to talk about before we wrap,、um, but I also can't let the the moment escape without saying like D1 pride because I am a <laughs>、yeah. I am a constituent of of that district and I love it. I didn't live there until five years, almost five years ago. Okay,、um, I was a, a resident of the mission for. Fourteen, fifteen years. No, seven, sixteen, seventeen years.、Nice. So like that was my base. And then when I met my then girlfriend, now wife, I was like, I I knew it over here, but I didn't know it. Yeah. And right away, I was like, oh, it's just like people are so friendly, and there's a lot more going on than you might think. That's、um, right. Just more sense of community. We got the ocean. We got、um, the park. We got the park.、Um, so yeah, I love D1. I'm yeah, glad, I'm glad I'm there now. Okay,、um, the thing that I'd love to end on that we're doing with all of our guests this season.、Um, our theme this season is we're still here. We started this season during the pandemic. Yeah.、Um, a lot of people leaving the city by choice.、Mm. A lot of people leaving the city not by choice. That's right.、Um, a lot of change. We're still in the pandemic. Let's be honest. What does it mean to you that phrase? We're still here. We are still here because we're survivors. I think all in all, we're survivors of the pandemic, because、uh, not all of us are so lucky,、um, and we're still here、uh, as we're survive surviving. You know, high cost of living,、mm-hmm. economic uncertainties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're we're here、um, as we're survivors for many things that has happened even before the pandemic.、Um, Not that things were always great. I think that you know sometimes it's hard to remember,、uh, even before the pandemic. Like life wasn't always、uh, easy already.、Um, so we're here, and、um, but I I like to think I like to think that not 
maybe it's hard to see at this immediate moment, but I would like to think that in 2022 is the year where we are going to say to ourselves that we're still here, we survived, and now it's time for us to take a step to thrive. And that we are hopeful, cautiously hopeful, um, but we're hopeful. And, and I think that we have to uh, with that and, and to say we're resilient and, and that we're, we're hopeful and we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. That was Supervisor Connie Chan. On the next episode of Storied San Francisco, we revisit Dragon Spunk Grows to kick off our City Gardens series and meet Danielle Fernandez. Episode 41 drops next Tuesday wherever you listen to podcasts. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 180 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, please rate and review the show so we can reach even more folks. We love email, and we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.